Uh, welcome all to the first video of 2019. Uh, this is an updated video regarding the nine mark questions on the AQA spec. Um, exactly the same video as previous, but with just a few additional slides on some of the lessons learned last year uh, from the students who went through that. Those slides will have a yellow background similar to this one. Rest of the video, absolutely the same. So if you have watched the video before, maybe jumping to those yellow slides uh, would be beneficial to you. Welcome to this uh, exam skills video. Uh, we're going to focus on the uh, longest and uh, most important question exam, the nine markers in this uh, video. You will get um, uh, a total of six of these throughout the exam, two on paper one, two on paper two, and also two on paper three, uh, with one which will be dedicated to your field work in paper three and one that will be dedicated to the um, pre-release materials also on paper three. United markers, before we get into those nine markers, your classic um, starting slide for these is up on the board. Just to remind yourselves, make sure you check the question really carefully. Any figures that they are giving you, make sure you um, identify absolutely all of it and use any of it that you can use. And uh, particularly important the nine markers is to make sure uh, you highlight the key words of the question too. We're going to go through those uh, command words in just a second just to show what you need to do on those but absolutely crucial you highlight these keywords as the nine marks are quite long questions um, missing one or two words out could mean the difference between a nine out of nine answer and uh, a three or even a zero out of nine answer okay then uh, in terms of nine markers i'll give you this advice um, in terms of the structure but also um, to advise you guys to do the nine markers first that we found towards the middle or actually at the back of the paper. Now the reason for this is these nine markers will be quite tricky and take a lot of time to to figure out exactly what the question's asking you. You don't want to be in the position with 10 minutes to go after already having done an English exam all day and then a geography exam thereafter to have to come up on the spot with something within that 10 minute time period. As a result, if you do these questions first, the, the concept would be as you're writing the rest of the exam paper, you'll have those questions uh, stirring around in your head and hopefully you'll be able to generate additional arguments if you are struggling uh, the first time that you look at those questions. So the nine markers to definitely do um, first on the basis you'll have more time to, to think them through. Also on this slide, um, your structure is always the same for nine markers. Introduce, tell the examiner the answer. That's the first thing I want you to do is to identify to the examiner this is the answer to this question. After that, your structure, you want two PLEs, point, example, explains, links, and evaluates. I probably mentioned this before, but actually the example and the explain can go either way round. It's just whatever's easiest to write for you. Point, example, explain, link, and evaluate. The evaluate is absolutely crucial on all these uh, nine markers. You need to um, consider any positives or negatives of any of the points that you're making. We'll come back to that in a minute when we go through the command words. And your conclusion, well, we start with that concept of overall, I think, to really stress the examiner, this is uh, my overall answer. And furthermore, uh, a nice little quote there, needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. If you're asked to judge success, you can only judge success in, in terms of two factors, sustainability and if it actually um, achieves the objective set out for it. If more people benefit than uh, the number of people that lose, you can always use this lovely sentence, which I thought was a Bible verse, but isn't. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Just a little bit of extra advice on that. Always name who the many and who the few are. You know, markers, you've got to use case studies or examples on all the three papers. If you don't, the maximum number of marks you'll get is three. Um, and crucially, the bottom on there, you've got to learn your fieldwork title uh, verbatim, which means word for word. Um, you are going to be asked for it in the exam. I can absolutely guarantee that you need both fieldwork titles. You need to be able to write them verbatim. If you are not sure what they are, go and see a geography teacher and ask and make sure. So for the additional advice here, the 2019 advice is in that green text there. Another way you can conclude these nine mark questions is to simply choose one of your arguments as the most important. If you then identify that this one argument outweighs all the other arguments, it is showing top level evaluation and can be put into your conclusion. So as a quick example, if you had um, a point arguing that, I don't know, there are opportunities in a hot desert environment because um, farmers can grow alfalfa grass or 
you can mine gold there or, or whatever it might be. However, you had an argument against it saying, well, actually, they're only very small scale industries because uh, the desert's so isolated. In your conclusion, you could say the fact that the hot desert is so isolated means that this outweighs the other arguments and means that actually there are not opportunities in the hot desert. Can see this in H8 if you're not sure about that one, but the concept being you simply pick one of your arguments, doesn't matter which one, and argue that that's the most important argument. Right, um, command words for this one. Um, the first one there, suggest. A uh, difficult nine marker, that one. You've, you've got to come up with uh, something yourself here. It can be a nine mark and you may get a photo or a figure to help you. But the idea is using your peel writing strategy, you've got to come up with something to answer any given question. It is very, very similar to, to explain on the base. You come up with something and explain your point um, and obviously linking back to the question. But uh, you've got to use your examples there. Right, the next uh, three or four command words all kind of go together. To what extent uh, means you provide two paragraphs looking at both sides or um, arguing that something is more or less important than, than another. We've got those contrast or comparison phrases there for you to use. I definitely advise you to use on the other hand on, on the basis that you make one argument and then you flip it to your uh, your other hand and say, oh, actually, another argument could be. Crucially, with all your nine markers, you have to reach a conclusion at the end overall, I think. Discuss, I mean, really, really similar to what extent. As a matter of fact, they're almost interchangeable. You're looking at the pros and cons or advantages and disadvantages of something. Start with the example you want to talk about in this discussion. Um, you're going to launch in with, um, I don't know, the, the term social or economic, and that's your, your lead-off point. Your, your point almost becomes social, economic, environmental for this question and, and the previous question. Exactly the same as always, two peelies uh, uh, for a nine marker. Assess, uh, you've got to look at both sides of the argument, usually will involve a case or an example. Uh, again, very, very similar to what extent and discuss questions, almost identical really. And finally, evaluate. Um, you're looking at the success of something, I'll, I'll be really honest with you, it's again very similar to the to what extent concept. I mean, the questions could actually be worded to what extent is X successful. And all you'd have to go is, right, here are some arguments for, here are some arguments against. Crucially on the evaluate questions, you've got to make sure you conclude, just like the previous ones. And in big red text at the bottom there, remember the only way you can measure success is if a project is sustainable, i.e. it works now and will also work in the future. Now the final one, this is the one that's ever so slightly different. Again, it's going to be an introduction to Peelies and a conclusion. The justify one is you've got to argue um, for or on the behalf of something. Um, it could be, for example, justifying the methods used in your field work or um, justify the decision to build a big reservoir, as an example. Even though it's a justify question, you still need to identify that there could be some problems with those points as well. So justify a little bit. A little bit ever so slightly different to the to what extent and assess questions however you are still going to have to evaluate there it just means in this question you're directed towards which side of the argument um, the examiner wants you to be on right all of those exam words again justify evaluate assess discuss um, with these questions these nine markers a general rule does exist in um, geography the concept is, or your case studies you've been given, um, that generally speaking, in terms of people and the economy, generally your case studies will be in favour of doing whatever that case study would be. So generally speaking, on these nine markers where you have to weigh up the pros and cons or uh, evaluate uh, a project or assess the decision made, from a general perspective, uh, your people and the economy always seem to benefit. Whereas, as a general rule, the environment is generally negatively affected by the projects that you have studied in geography thus far. If you're being asked about the uh, success of something, this is a brilliant opportunity to talk about sustainability on the basis that from a social and an economic point of view, uh, any decision made is uh, sustainable. It will work for people and it will work for those people to make money or the country to make money or the country to develop. 
However, from an environmental point of view, actually, generally speaking, the projects that, that you've been taught actually will not be environmentally sustainable and as a result can be criticised in, in this fashion. So whenever you get a nice that's justify, evaluate, assess or discuss, a really, really good rule to remember is to think it's likely that there is a social or an economic argument to prove that this is successful and likely to be an environmental argument to prove that it is unsuccessful. And hopefully this also gives you some sentence starters for your appeals, um, as an example, from a social perspective or in terms of social sustainability. And obviously the same works for economic and environmental. It gives you a lead in to your arguments. And we'll have a little go at some nine marks here, just planning some sentences. OK, our third 2019 update with the key terms justify, evaluate, assess and discuss. A second general rule exists, which hopefully will make it far easier this year for the students going through this course. If you ever see one of these words, and it doesn't matter if it's on a six mark or a nine marker, what I would advise you to do is simply cross that word out and simply write down the word judgment. Now, if you've uh, been taught this by me in class, I'll probably ask you to imagine Judge Judy, that battle axe on American TV who shouts at people. At the end of the day, what she has to do is she has to make a judgment. She has to look at the facts of a case and say, I think this person's guilty or I think this person's innocent. That's why she's called a judge and she makes a judgment. If you get one of these questions in your GCSE geography question or paper, I should say, what I want you to do is simply cross out, let's say, the word evaluate and say, right, simply, I need to make a judgment here. Is this project good or is this project bad? And you've got to weigh that up and say, I think this. So you ever get one of these questions, you've got to make a judgment. You've got to make an overall claim, whether it's successful or unsuccessful, whether it's long term or short term whether it's sustainable or unsustainable, you've got to make a judgment based off what the question's asking you. Uh, with these three on the board, we've got the top one there, evaluate the effectiveness of an urban transport scheme you have studied. Your classic example here is your park and ride in Plymouth, which is a brilliant little case study to prove uh, my previous point about social, economic and environmental. Evaluate the effectiveness, you've got to weigh up overall, is this urban transport scheme effective? And hopefully some of those figures have stuck with you. From a social perspective, we could certainly argue that Plymouth Park and Ride is successful because there's been a 4.1% reduction in traffic in the inner city. This is fantastic uh, leading point to argue it is socially sustainable because there's 4.1% less traffic in the inner city. The explanation then becomes uh, people can uh, travel around faster, there's uh, less congestion. Uh, as an example, people are then more inclined to go and shop in the CBD because they know that the, the travel will be faster, both on the bus and actually driving as well. And therefore, the urban transport scheme has uh, achieved its aim of dragging more shoppers into the CBD. So there's your like social argument to prove that this transport scheme has worked. You could also link the economics there as well, really, on the basis that these people will be spending in shops in Plymouth City Centre, e.g., I don't know, Primark or Apple and as a result those shops will earn more money and pay more tax. It also means with more shoppers that um, more shops are also going to be attracted to Plymouth. For example, um, just name any newest shop in Plymouth. Uh, you could say Yo Sushi as an example and the basis there is that those shops are now opening so even more tax will be paid and urban decay in Plymouth will, will decline. When we flip that, however, we can argue from an environmental perspective that these um, the, the park and ride scheme has been unsuccessful. And you could argue it there for um, the, the people of the suburbs, for example, a 9% increase in increase in noise, uh, for example, or um, during the construction of the um, park and ride lanes, there was noise disruption. Um, they had to, um, I mean, there's also some social negatives as well. We could say that um, during the building of the um, park and ride lanes, there was more congestion. Uh, therefore, more congestion uh, means that there are more um, fumes being released. And that would also apply in the suburbs today. There's been a 9% increase in the traffic in the suburbs in Plymouth. Uh, more stationary traffic there means more carbon monoxide release into the atmosphere, which means that for, pe for sufferers of asthma, this could be considered a, a very ineffective um, urban transport scheme. So hopefully you can see there, if you remember those words, social, economic, environmental, hopefully you can generate some arguments. Oh, I've just remembered the, uh, the absolute brilliant argument there of the economic um, 
unsuitability or unsustainability. How do you say that word? Economic unsustainability. Economic failure. Economic failure, that'll do. Where um, uh, the buses, the, it costs the council £837 a day to run this scheme. Therefore, you can argue it simply is not effective from that way as well. All right, the next one up on the board. Um, let's talk through this one quickly. TNCs or transnational companies only bring advantages to the host country. Do you agree with this statement? Justify your decision. So you can see there with a the justify, you have to make a claim of either yes or no and then argue on that side. Now then, only bring advantage to the host country. Um, I mean, it's probably easier there to argue no. Uh, if we were to use our transnational corporation of uh, Shell, for example, our negative, again, is going to be an environmental regarding oil spills in the Niger Delta. Those oil spills have obviously polluted um, fish habitats and also therefore killed off those uh, wading birds in that area. And as a, as a result of that, I should say, the food web has uh, begun to collapse in the Niger Delta. You would have to also flip that argument though and just identify that actually maybe there are some positives as well on the basis that um there there are some positives brought eg uh, the six thousand people directly employed by shell equals uh, those people have formal jobs so pay tax the government has more money to invest in schools and hospitals in the future they should have more educated uh, population who can read and write and etc 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 the positive multiplier effect so hopefully again you can see that environmentally shell has probably not been overall a positive to the country of Nigeria, whereas socially and economically, actually, perhaps for the whole country, you could probably argue that, that it had been. Right, the final one here. For a hot desert environment you have studied, because obviously we wouldn't do the cold environment, to what extent does the environment provide both opportunities and challenges for development? I mean, it's just an absolute give me for the social, economic and environmental again. Um, in terms of the opportunities provided, uh, the example I'd advise you to use is the Mojave Desert, um, the opportunities are both economic and social. It has the ability to, or there is the ability to mine gold here. There's 20 full-time um, employees, uh, full-time miners, I should say, who earn money and pay taxes. From a social perspective, you've got all of those leisure activities that can be provided here. For example, uh, off-roading or visiting ghost towns or even Las Vegas itself are all opportunities provided within the hot desert environment. Counter argument, the challenges for development are environmentally based. There is obviously 50 degree temperatures during the day uh, and also a lack of rainfall, less than uh, 200 millimetres of rainfall every year. That makes it hard for the area to develop from an environmental perspective because, I don't know, you can't grow enough food, so you have to import food, so that costs more money, so businesses make le less profit. Or um, it's very, very hot, so people dehydrate very quickly, it means you need to import water, therefore additional cost and uh, therefore less profit for the businesses as well. So the concept there is that social, economic and environmental points can hopefully build your, your, your arguments or build your answers. I mean, overall, if I was concluding this question, I would absolutely agree that uh, both opportunities and challenges exist. However, the opportunities probably outweigh the challenges on the basis that um, those opportunities have, have continued in the Mojave Desert. Hopefully that little nine marker talk through has been useful. Um, if you want to go through any of those individual nine markers or any that, that you guys have come across in your own uh, textbooks or revision guides, please, please, please come and see us. We'll happily talk those through with you. So this is actually the final part of the video now. Those previous exam questions um, on the previous slide, just to make it absolutely abundantly clear that you can make a judgment here. Remember that idea, that new thing that we're going to teach through in 2019, that you try and make a judgment. Here's one written in green up on the board here regarding the uh, effectiveness of an urban transport scheme. Overall, the Plymouth Park and Ride scheme is not effective despite the social positives for the commuters and the reduced carbon emissions because the scheme is not economically sustainable. What we're doing there is that we're combining this idea of making a judgment while also hopefully showing you a little model there of how you can pick one argument as the most important argument. Reduced carbon emissions is not as important as the scheme not being economically sustainable. The fact that it loses its £427 a day or whatever it is. This is the concept where you pick one argument to make your judgment. Hope that makes sense. I know it's a really long video this one, but it is the most important video on this channel. Come and see us down in H8 if you're not sure.